okay my this video is to demonstrate about the protein folds or the structural part of a protein which denotes a fun of to make a fully functional protein now we have talked about motifs and we are we are having a simple stretches of amino acid at the first place then we fold them together to make a secondary structure which is a domains like alpha helix beta sheets strands and uh, loops and hairpins and all these things then uh, we are arranging those uh, domains together th that means alpha helix beta sheets and hairpins all these things together to give the meaning for making a good structure a meaningful structure of a protein we call it the call them the motifs now we have the motifs you know what we call a protein fold is that the interaction of those motifs to make a functional three dimensional protein molecule is called a protein fold now a protein to make a properly properly functional protein it has to have a proper protein fold so we have motifs like alpha beta alpha like alpha alpha like beta beta and all this type of motifs now arranging that motifs and the overlapping interactions of those motifs with each other finally makes the protein fold okay so uh, why we uh, say this overlapping because you can see the in, the in this picture these motifs are always try to overlap with each other so this is a very simplistic diagram where i just uh, take all these things and uh, stretch them into one plane but it is not at all like that if i look if you look at this structure this is a schematic presentation of this structure then you can find uh, there are several regions of overlap but in this picture also this is very very simple structure of the immunoglobulin of ours so it's a very small amino acid containing molecule that's why you can see like that but if we go and look for the higher amino acid containing molecule then you can find the proper fold so now here you can see there are several op overlapping regions inside this protein so we have the alpha helices and we have this turns and all this and this alpha helix is overlapping both these two alpha helices and this uh, alpha, alpha helix is overlapping other two so this overlapping regions of the alpha alpha motifs is making this kind of protein which is in this case is uh, the uh, four helix bundle type of protein as you can see the interactions are uh, the overlapping interactions are finally makes the protein to fold and this is called the protein fold now if we go and look for the protein fold so this is in in, in this structure as you can see we have the anti parallel strands throughout the place so it may possible it, it, it may possible that we have arrangement like straight cut like well like a one loop is cut uh, attaching them then another loop attaching this and this but that is not the case in this place as we can see uh, in 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 this I, I want you to focus on this uh, here in this orange and the cyan colored uh, no, is not actually cyan this is uh, this is uh, what you can say green this is a type of green and we have this uh, orange and green and what happens in this case uh, this orange and green can be connected with each other easily can be connected with each other to make uh, this motif uh, this domains uh, stable but instead of connecting these two this orange has to be connected uh, in this case is connected with this yellow and this yellow in turn connected with this green and finally this green is connected with that green so why this kind of complexity arises the answer is to give a proper function for the protein so it's not only the domains again i'm telling you it's about the arrangement of the domains in motifs it's all about the arrangement of motifs the overlapping uh, interactions of motifs with each other to give a meaning to the proper protein fold okay so again this is called the protein fold and due to the nature of this protein fold to rise the proper functional protein it will interact in several different types of ways rather than we think that it uh, need to interact okay so we think that it has it can interact like this but it, it it's not about what it can it's about what to produce a good properly functional protein so this is uh, our actual goal this is the actual goal to make a properly functional fully functional protein and to make this fully functional protein uh, and prior give a priority to this uh, content to give a priority to make a properly functional protein we need to design you need to arrange these motifs in several different ways and that's what we are doing in this case okay so this is another uh, example of retinol binding protein in this case you can see this is very pretty simple so only uh, uh, hairpin loops are connecting all these anti parallel sheets but in previous case as we can see in this picture we cannot see the simple attachment so there are this is the difference between the protein fold so the protein fold of immunoglobulin give rise to this and protein fold of this uh, beta retinol give rise to this now as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 8 uh, beta strands give rise to this structure and 7 uh, strand give rise to this structure so the only the, the change is between the folding pattern so protein fold is 
denoting the function. So due to this kind of protein fold, it gives rise to the production of uh, the immunoglobulin, which is highly specific to bind with ligands, which are antigens, but uh, lacking this structure uh, and, and this beta uh, and this retinol. This retinol, which is the beta barrel structure, lacking all this due to the due to the interaction, due to this uh, this simple interaction with each other, and making this beta barrel. So the how much different the structures can be only the, uh, the different di uh, due to the difference of motif overlapping interactions. That's what uh, my goal to tell you. Okay, so that th just keep these things in your mind. Now, if we go here. We can also see this kind of protein folding, which is a proper uh, when it, it is proper for properly folded. We can find this is a structure of bovine uh, beta crystalline, which is gamma B crystalline, as you can see. Now I want you to focus on here, as you can see, this is the structure of enzyme peptide. As you can see, it is a N acetyl beta D uh, glucosam uh, glucosaminyl asparagine amidase. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, this is one by one. Mm, parallel uh, parallel beta strands you can find uh, up to four we have uh, beta strands arranging like that from five we have another st we have the same type of beta strand what happens we have eight strands and what happens to make a simple fine uh, fine interaction they bo they fold the structure from four and five strand and after folding this fold will interact with each other will interact via different domain inter domain interactions and motive interactions to finally make a motifs like this and this is the arrangement now you can also also see these are simply anti parallel beta strands so they can easily be linked via the hairpin links like that but it never uh, happens like that again in this case the protein fold is differing so due to the difference of protein fold it gives rise to another type of structure another totally different types of acid uh, totally different types of enzyme different types of protein so all of these three structures i have talked about this this is a uh, uh, this is the structure of asparagine amidase uh, uh, which is also b beta barrel and it is also made up with say one two three four five six seven. so is this is also made up with eight strands eight beta strands and and some linkers to make this uh, protein uh, which is uh, resembling the beta barrel now if we look again uh, the structure of this is uh, the structure of this uh, beta crystalline ga gamma b crystalline again this is also made up with eight beta strands but it 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 gives rise to different types of amino uh, different types of enzyme now let's focus on the previous one this is what this is the retinol right this is a retinol binding protein again this is made up with the eight uh, i mean uh, eight, eight beta strands but still this three uh, uh, of these proteins what i have talked this this beta retinol binding protein uh, uh, and uh, this uh, which is called uh, beta uh, gamma B crystalline and as well as uh, in this case which is asparagine amidase though these three proteins are made up with the same types of domains the same number of domains are present same types of domains are present so why they are differing in their structure so as you can see they are uh, the structure is a little bit similar though the structure is a little bit similar but the functions are different the functions are different hell and heaven why this they are differing because of the pro protein fold so it's not only again i'm emphasizing it's not all about the structure of domains it's not uh, all about the presence of type of domains it's about the interactions of domains it's about how those domains are interacting with each other to make motifs and how those motifs are overlapping with each other they're interacting with each other to make a proper protein fold which finally leads to the production of a proper folded protein which is a properly functional protein so we not we have to assure if we have to assure a properly functional protein we not only have to have a, a arrangement of domains but the arrangement has to ha has to be meaningful right so that is really really important now if we talk here uh, we, we have another type of uh, structured here you can see this is the topological diagram of different barrels now uh, in the previous time we have talked about the simple uh, uh, simple all this type of uh, interactions of domains in the same plane now let us look if uh, 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 outside of the plane interactions can possible or not and you can see this kind of interaction are really possible now in this picture what we can look at this is the carboxypeptidase a in the upper layer and then uh, and this this picture this is the uh, in terminal domain of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase which both of them are very very abundant and common uh, enzymes the structures are uh, here denoting the regions of as you can see there there are uh, the the regions through which we can see the there are overlapping regions the crossovers can be formed 
So this kind of crossovers will generate several different types of protein structure. Now as you can see in this picture, as you can see in this picture uh, of uh, the um, dogfish lactate dehydrogenase, uh, now the peptide backbones are shown in ribbons uh, in this in this upper picture, as you can see. And here we have uh, we, what what we are looking at in this picture, the uh, beta uh, B picture, uh, that um, there are switch points in between them. So if these are the so, so these are the only barrels uh, these are the beta ch chains so we have one beta chain and it is in turn linked uh, via using this cross crossover and each time it is uh, using a crossover uh, to switch the direction as we can see so if we have to go from here to ho here here from from this left side to right side or right side to left side we can use the normal uh, type of uh, inter normal type of uh, loops or hairpin loops or turns something like that but if we need to switch the direction for example you need to switch from here then left to right then right to left again so if we need to switch these directions we need to have different switch points using crossovers so we need crossovers or structure like crossover to switch the direction now what is crossover crosses simply means so let's consider this is uh, the plane so from here on to here except for this yellow which is getting slightly tilted like that all these things present in the same plane now if when you're talking about this structure which is just from 3 to 4 which is connecting from 3 to 4 is something which is not present in the same plane it is just uh, slightly above the plane to cross these two planes together and why we need this structure because remember we start our discussion the direction from here one two three now we are going from right to left now in this case we need to switch on our direction from left to right again so we need something to link them together and in this kind of link we cannot have something on the same plane that we started the journey either we have to have something some linker which carries through uh, this uh, joining uh, above the plane or we need something which carries through this journey below the plane in this case we are seeing it going above the plane and in this picture we can see the same region uh, from we are starting from here we need to go from 3 to 4 we are producing something which is just crossing just crossing it from uh, above the plane and uh, the linker which is crossing uh, the strand 1 and 2 uh, which is this red colored link and linker is crossing 1 and 2 below the plane so each time if we need to switch our direction we need to have the switch points which are denoted with these arrows the switch points production is really important now in this picture we are talking about another type of fold which is called double wound sheet now if we think this uh, if we look at the structure schematic diagram of this double wound sheet as you can see these are lots of types of different crossovers which is green in color here and also this blue uh, blue and is a red blue line so we have two crossovers three crossovers actually so have this uh, so this gray colored shadow is a plane is our plane and we are having the protein structure which is this beta B, uh, beta 1 which is red beta 2 which is uh, which is this red again and beta 3 is blue and beta 4 is blue now we are starting our journey from beta 1 and we go beta 1 to beta 2 we can use uh, simple uh, uh, as we are looking at here uh, these are not parallel these are and uh, these are uh, not anti parallel these are parallel if we have a para uh, anti parallel here then you can easily join with the hairpin loops but as we are not having any anti -par anti parallel we are having the parallel we ha always have have to use these crossovers so print this in your mind when whenever we are having two parallel beta sheets we need a crossover to join them whether we are talking about any kind of direction left to right or right to left okay but we need the crossovers uh, though we are having the anti parallel oriented oriented uh, anti parallel oriented beta sheets we only need crossovers if we go we wa want to go back or shift the direction okay so in this case, it's it's irrect irrespective of going the direction uh, because of presenting the parallel uh, uh, strands. We need we must need a, a linker. We must need a crossover to continue that. So we have a crossover to go through that. Okay. Now now let's think from here on. We have uh, again from this part to this part. We, uh, from this beta two to beta three, which is also parallel in nature. We need another crossover because whenever we are joining two parallel beta strands, we need a cross crossover. And whenever we are joining to anti parallel, we do not need usually crossovers, we need the hairpin loops, but we will need crossover if we shift the direction. That's my take home message for this lecture. Now, in this case, we have to join the beta 2 and beta 3, we, uh, which are also parallel in nature. We need a uh, crossover. In this case, this is the crossover. This, this green color is a crossover, which is 
connecting these two and we are again have to beta 3 and beta 4 we have to connect them to connect them we have another crossover because they are again parallel in orientation now the crossover of this red is as we can see it's above the plane and the crossover for the connecting this beta 2 beta 3 and beta 3 beta 4 are below the plane which are green and uh, blue respectively okay so this is what we are talking about if we draw it something like that then you can find this is uh, above the plane and these are the below the plane plane so these are the below plane arrangement and this is the switch point remember so so the direction we are start talking about from here on to here so the left to right and then we finally have to shift from right to left but still we are having the parallel so we need uh, whatever irrespective of the sh shifting direction we will need uh, this kind of crossovers but still if we have anti-parallel though we will need uh, this kind of uh, crossovers because uh, we are shifting our direction okay so again I'm telling you generally if we have to connect to parallel beta strands we need a crossover above the plane or below the plane and if we are talking about anti-parallel arrangement of beta strands we do uh, to connect to anti-parallel uh, arrangement of beta strands we do not usually need any crossovers usually hairpin loops and beta turns will work to attach them together but if we need to shift the direction we'll need the crossover so just print this in your mind and, uh, and, in, and, and important of all the arrangement as we are looking at so the same is in spite of having same type of domains eight beta domains the structures are varying and the functions are much more varying uh, which is expression of the structures so this is a very important message to all of you that we have to look for this thing and the, 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 the protein function depends on the arrangement of proteins so the interaction of protein motifs with each other rather than the presence of protein uh, secondary structures okay that's all and I hope that's gonna help you thank you for watching